Hello everyone, and I am so excited to be filming my very first book review for 2020. Welcome to another book video with Bookish with Mariah. I'm so happy to have you all back at my booktube channel. So uh, I'm just really excited. I'm, I don't know. You all know that I'm always excited to talk to you all about books every time I get the opportunity. And so right now I have some exciting news. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do at Bookish with Mariah, which I will link it below this video so you can follow me on Instagram because I have a few exciting announcements. So I'm already gushing over my brand new camera and microphone because I'm hoping to continue to improve my video content for you all and so that way you can have a great experience every time you're on my channel so go check it out because the camera is adorable shout out to my lovely husband that worked so hard to find the camera and pick one out especially for me because he knows how much I'm so invested in my videos so anyway that's announcement number one also a really fun announcement is I actually just purchased which I meant to mention this in a like several videos before but I just didn't get around to it and kept forgetting every time I filmed but anyway I just purchased my very first pop toy which is so cute look at it here yes I'm really excited about it I just purchased it it was 50% off at Barnes and Noble so I was like I've got to get it so that way I can start decorating my little shelf here and so this is Masandi from Game of Thrones if you are a Game of Thrones fan then you already know what I'm talking about but Masandi was my favorite one of my favorite characters because I had plenty of them but this is Daenerys Targaryen's right hand homegirl so I love her and I'm very happy to add her to my bookshelf so today I'm sure you all have all read the title of this video. I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite books so far for 2020. This was one of my recent videos or not videos sorry one of my recent books that I did mention in a previous or several previous videos. This book comes from my July TBR and also it comes from my Reading Rush wrap up. I participated in the Reading Rush from July 20th through July 26th and it was one of the books that I read for the Reading Rush. So I have really enjoyed this particular book. You've already read the title of the video so you know what I'm talking about. Today I'm going to be reviewing a Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. This review is going to be spoiler free so that way if you haven't read the book it's okay. It's just going to give you a brief synopsis of what the book is about and also talk to you all about favorite characters, aesthetic, all kind of stuff that I'm going to gush about without spoiling anything. Okay so to get started with my review just so you all remember I've mentioned this in a previous video but I do like to take notes when I read and I have a reading journal that I love which is here this beautiful cover. So if you see me glancing down that's just because I took quite a bit of notes on this particular book because I loved it so much but I take notes on almost all of my books. But anyway let's get going. So a Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney is a urban fantasy. Um, it is so cool because it takes place in Atlanta, Georgia, and you're following the character named Alice. So a little bit about the book. So let's first start with the aesthetic and how the book looks. So that's point number one, aesthetic. How does it look? Well, one of the things I loved about it so much is you have some really cool black girl magic right here on the front cover, which I'm all for, of course, you all already know. Beautiful black girl magic here. Another thing that I love so much is her natural hair that she is rocking on the front. So just by looking at it from first glance, I already was like, this is really cool. This is awesome. Awesome representation. I love that. So I was all for it. Um, of course, I would be all for it regardless of what the female character looked like. But just because I identified with her just by how she looked, I was like, she is I'm, I'm just here for it. I'm here for it. Anyway, I love the upside down heart and the beautiful colors that's displayed here. Another cool thing about this one is the inside on the spine. It actually has all four suits. And so I thought that was actually really cool. So judging by aesthetic, I think it's beautiful. I mean, I would give it a five a five out of five and the back is also very pretty I love the white and red roses which are very subtle they're not overpowering but I thought that was just beautiful so I think this book actually is one of my 
prettiest books or one of my favorite covers on my current bookshelf so aesthetic I'm really here for it and I love it all right so in this particular story it follows Alice and Alice is a 17 year old I think she's 17 a 17 year old girl that is pretty much growing up without her you know father and so she has a really tough time dealing with the grief and what's going on in her personal life so this story takes place right off flop with her running into the hatter in an alley so let's then the next point let's see i have the plot and we can also set up the magic system and how it works so um the the story basically follows an alternate universe and that alternate universe is wonderland and it acts basically parallel to our world right now and so the magic system the way it's set up is like you have dreams you have nightmares and then you have humans and then you have wonderlandians Ugh, that may not be a word but the people that live in wonderland so anyway alice Alice is currently a girl living an average normal life and she ends up running getting like anxiety really bad anxiety she was in the hospital and her father passed away and she runs into an alley and she meets the Hatter the which is named Addison Hatter in this particular book and she starts to learn all these things about Wonderland and about dream walkers and also about um the magic system and what's going on in wonderland and how it is affecting her life now and how it affects everyone's lives so the way the magic system works is you have nightmares and nightmares are filled with anything negative like hate guilt anxiety anything that's going on in this world right now any type of bad feelings that fuels really bad nightmares and those nightmares come to life inside of wonderland and then you have times where those nightmares will venture inside of our world right now on this side and they will try to attack people those nightmares they grow into like really nasty awful creatures like monstrous type creatures scary creatures and they are stronger when they come to our world so when they're in wonderland they're powerful but when they come to our world they're even more powerful because they're fueled by the anxiety the hate like humans fuel nightmares so if a nightmare is actually in our world and operating in our world it would be so much more powerful because it's so directly close to the um feelings and emotions that our world brings so um alice so you have people like alice who are dream walkers she didn't know she was a dream walker until she was recruited by hatta who noticed that alice could be could see the nightmares can everybody see nightmares and not every human is going to be a dream walker but since alice was able to see the nightmare because she got attacked by a nightmare in an alley and she saw the nightmare she was scared to death but she also saw Addison Hatter who is the Mad Hatter in this particular story and he noticed that she could see what was going on and so since he noticed that she could he knew that she could be recruited to be a dream walker. So this story has been described as like a Buffy the Vampire, vampire Slayer meets Alice in Wonderland. I absolutely think it does live up to that hype. I am a Buffy the Vampire Slayer um fan and so i do think it does live up to that hype so let's talk about the character so we know the world and the magic system and the way that it works um another thing i want to mention about the world and the magic system you have these places these portals called veils and they're basically scattered um all parts of the world and you have people like the gatekeepers like addison he's a gatekeeper um he helps protect those portals so that way the nightmares can't get out of wonderland and if they do wander into wonderland you have the gatekeeper and also Alice who is a dream walker who helps defeat those nightmares before they go and like parade the streets and take over the world and do whatever evil that they want to do inside of the actual world our world okay that's my last tidbit about the magic system and that's super important so um as far as characters I loved the characters in this story and I actually feel like everybody had their own storyline. One of the things I appreciated so much about the characters in this story, you didn't have an unnecessary character or you didn't have any character in there that didn't play like a major role in what was happening. I read some books where I'm like, okay, I probably could have done without that character or this character is just 
feeling a little unnecessary or not helping the story this particular book every character had something going on and so it really fed to what was happening with Alice which was the major part of the story so in this story you have Alice obviously the main character then you have Chess and Courtney who are her best friends and she goes to high school with them and you have her mother who plays a major role in her life then you have her Wonderland friends which is Addison you have and yeah Addison which is the Hatter you have Maddie which in my opinion I will compare her a lot a lot to the sleeping dormouse that's inside of Alice in Wonderland and then you have um the dim and then you have another character which I can't think of his name right now but it's dim and dom or something like that but they are the twins that you see in Alice in Wonderland they kind of operate like that and um you also also have who they call the Duchess as well who's in this story each character played a major role I loved the character development I loved her relationship with those characters and Alice finds herself trying to batter her life like right now she has like her regular life that she is trying to function in and then she also has to balance that with her life with Wonderland and she has to keep her life in Wonderland a secret the only person that knows about what she does in Wonderland is her best friend Courtney and that brings like a big strain on their relationship and she feels guilty a lot of time having to lie to her mother about the truth of where she's going and what she's doing and then she also has to flake on her friends quite a bit because she wants to have a regular high school life but she flakes on her friends a lot because a lot is going on in Wonderland and she's one of the main people that can be there to stop it and keep the whole world safe so the way she's thinking and the things she's going through is really much so like what a high school student student at this time that's been thrown into this fantasy world would possibly feel during a time like this. Another thing I really loved about this character is how real and authentic Alice was. I will say um, just a warning about this particular book it does have a little bit of profanity in it but I will say I just loved like the sayings that was used in here like some of the one-liners that was used in here like all of them were used to describe her emotions and how she's feeling at the time and honestly I think a lot of teenage girls can relate to this and it really made me feel that in my heart like wow this sounds like my mom and my uh, myself at that time in my life when I was a teenager another thing I wanted to bring up is um let's see did I write it down outside of those characters I like how subtle when it comes to the characters the love triangle was it wasn't overpowering sometimes like I'm all for a love triangle fine I'll read about it and I actually enjoy it but there are times where I don't want that to be like the main focus of a story and in this one it actually wasn't so overpowering so overbearing where that's all you're focused on and you're like oh here we go another love triangle taking over and basically basing every decision off of that love triangle so no in this in this story Alice basically makes her decisions and what she feels is best based off the good of everyone the good of the world the good of her personal relationship with those particular people that are affected with what's going on and she really cares so much about her friendships her mother and her family um in this story Hada gets sick and he is something happens but just know something happens to him and she goes off on this journey so she can try to help him because over this time Hada has actually trained her to be a dream walker so without her she wouldn't have been able to be in this world to where she's in Wonderland and she's fighting and she's developed a really close friendship with Hada and she wants to try to save him so she has to travel as far into Wonderland that she has ever been um Hada has some limitations to his traveling abilities based off some things I can't say but but um, she has to travel far into Wonderland to try to find some type of help for him and that takes us on this long and drawn out journey into so much more. All right so another point I wanted to bring up about this book was representation. So for me representation is really really important. I'm also always trying to diversify my reading and I'm always looking at ways to just connect with other characters in other ways or just find different representation in the books that I read because if I recommend something to people from different walks of life I like to look at all of the different type of representation at a glance in here so in this story you do of course we got black girl magic here right on the cover and then also there is a slight female to female relationship that I'm hoping in the next book will be fostered a little bit more and we can learn more about that relationship so maybe a slight LGBTQIA representation in here as well um, another thing is the political 
situations that's dealt with in this particular story oh my gosh that was one of the highlights and one of my favorite parts about it so we all know what's going on in the media right now with so many senseless killings whether it's police brutality whether it's black on black crime it, it's just so much that's going on in the black community and this book dealt heavy with a recent murder that happens in the neighborhood and it shows how much anxiety and fear that her mother had about her being able to go out and just walk um to school every day or being out with her friends like her mother worried so much because of a recent killing that happened in the neighborhood and what fueled all of her mother's anxiety and anger and also right now the neighborhood where Alice lives is very angry with how the case is being handled pertaining to the death of a young black girl and so that is creating really big monstrous nightmares in Wonderland actually and it's all fueled by the anxiety the hate the anger that's going on pertaining to a recent death of a young black girl and I, I was just like wow that is totally happening right now in the media where we live now in 2020 it's just it hit home so much that fear and that anxiety her mother had about just her loved one leaving out that door and it really could be the last time and who knows what could happen based off the color of her skin so that representation is inside of this book and another thing that is in here that I thought was so special and so sweet and done so beautifully is Alice has friends that are of Caucasian descent and her friends were so protective over her like they cared so much about her feelings and what she was going through and supported her in ways when it came to race and what she was facing in her neighborhood in a way that I felt was so sweet and special now um there was some issues when it comes to like her wonderland life that her friends end up having but that's normal because of the fantasy life and you remember I said how um Alice flaked on them a couple times but outside of that in the in pertaining to race I really loved how careful the author was in approaching that and also just how special her relationship to her friends were and how they were from a different walk of life and a different race but they were right there to support Alice and right there valid like talking about to her like how they feel and how she feels and just making sure she was okay so I felt like that was beautifully done I loved it it wasn't too overpowering it wasn't too much but it was beautifully done and I enjoyed that so in pertaining to ratings for this one I would absolutely rate this book probably like somewhere around a four point yeah a four star to a 4.5 I absolutely enjoyed this one I cannot wait to read the second book which is already out so I'm actually happy that I just now read it because that means I could just speed right ahead to the second book and I don't have to wait for a release so I'm really hype about that one this was a really it was like a pleasant surprise I knew that I heard great things about the author but oh my gosh it was actually good this is a bad ass Alice like that's the best way I could describe it like she is one of those girls that's not gonna take any crap from anybody she's gonna stand up for herself she's gonna fight she is strong she's very passionate about her beliefs and her friends and her family she has a sweet kind heart and really wants to do the right thing by her family and she just doesn't want to hurt anybody and her mother relationship that she has she's a little bit resentful from her mom because when her father passed away Alice really felt like she had to literally step up to the 10th power because she had to bear the burden of of course losing her father but she didn't get a lot of time to grieve either because her mom completely fell apart after her dad passed and she had to basically cook clean meet with like relatives take a bunch of phone calls make sure the bills was paid still go to school and balance things and she kept a part-time job she had a lot to t take up and do and her mom she had to like basically make sure her mom was okay so she loves her mom to death she's so protective of her mother but she does know that her mom is still struggling so much with the passing of her husband and that's so understandable because anytime you're dealing with grief it comes in waves and it is so hard and so that relationship i just 
I was so intrigued with it all and the way that she went about everything she had going on with Wonderland versus her home life. So I would absolutely recommend this to you all. It's been one of my favorite reads so far of 2020 and I am definitely going to keep reading more of L.L. McKinney. So that wraps up my first book review, my first mini review, spoiler free. I hope I did a good job. I hope I gave this book justice when it comes to explaining the characters, explaining the magic system. I really hope I did. I don't know. This was my first time doing this out loud instead of when I'm like explaining all this stuff to my husband and he's like rolling his eyes like, mm, okay, but <laughs> you know, but I just absolutely love it. And it's one of the reasons why I joined the booktube community because I literally have no one hardly to talk about books, books with in my regular life. I just don't. And I'm really hoping I'm pushing forward because hopefully one day when I get um, maybe at 500 subscribers, I might do a Q&A or at 1,000 subscribers, I might do a Q&A. I don't know. Um, but I'm still weighing all that out. I'm so freshly new to booktube, but I'm so excited to be here and I hope you you all enjoyed this review of A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. Follow me on Instagram at Bookish with Mariah because I want to keep gushing about this one because I enjoyed it. It was my first urban fantasy and it was stellar. The fact that it was based in Atlanta, Georgia, where I currently live, I live in Atlanta. I'm like, every time she said like Georgia State University or Midtown, I'm like, I know where you are, kind of. <laughs> Anyway, it was good. So please, please, please subscribe to my channel. If you like my content, I would love to have you join my bookish world and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.